Hey y'all, ever wondered why you can charge your phone from a tiny power station, but you need a house outlet to run your fridge? That's the battle between AC and DC power. It all comes down to two kinds of electricity, AC and DC. And if you stick with me, not only will you understand the difference between the two, but you'll also see how electrons actually move. And I'll show you how a little box like this EBL P500 Mini takes both kinds of power and makes them useful for everyday life. Let's start super simple. Electricity is just tiny particles called electrons, and they're on the move. Every atom, the building block of everything around us, has a nucleus in the center and little electrons orbiting around them. These electrons carry a negative charge, and here's the key, they don't like to sit still. If there's a difference in energy that gives them a reason to move, they're gonna move. That reason is called voltage. Voltage is like electrical pressure. It's the difference between a place that has a lot of electric potential and a place that has less electric potential. Think of it like water in tanks. If one tank is filled higher than the other and you connect them with a pipe, the water naturally flows downhill until both sides are level. Water always wants to equalize and electrons behave exactly the same way. They're constantly trying to balance out the difference between high voltage and low voltage. That push to equalize is what sets them in motion. And just like that water flowing from one tank to another, it can spin a water wheel and do useful work. Electrons flowing from high voltage to low voltage also do work. That motion, the flow of electrons, is what lights a bulb or spins a motor or charges your phone. Now, if all this talk about voltage and flow sounds familiar, it's because we covered the basics of volts, amps, and watts back in episode one of this series. If you missed that, I highly recommend that you go back and watch it. It'll make this click even more. I'll leave a link uh, down below so you can catch up anytime. And while we're at it, if you'd like to grab an EBL P500 mini station like this one, I'm showing here, I'll leave my link down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. All right, let's start with DC power and a plain old battery. Uh, I got one here, and on one end you've got the positive terminal, and on the other you've got the negative. Electrons are packed in tighter on the negative side, and they naturally want to move toward the positive side. That difference, that pressure, is what we call voltage. Think of it like two tanks of water at different levels, like we were talking about earlier. Water always wants to flow downhill until it levels out. Electricity works the same way. Electrons want to move until the charge is balanced from this negative side to this positive side. So when you connect a wire across a battery, the electrons will flow in one steady direction from negative to positive until the energy that is stored in the battery is used up. That's direct current or DC. Now here's the neat part. When you charge a battery, you're basically pushing water back uphill. So you're applying a higher voltage from an outside source and that pressure forces electrons back onto the negative side. When you discharge it, you're letting those electrons run back downhill again, doing useful work along the way. That's the heart of DC power. Steady flow, one direction, like water running downhill through a pipe. Now let's look at AC power. Instead of a battery with a simple push from negative to positive, a generator works differently. Inside, you've got a coil of wire that's spinning inside a magnetic field. And here's the neat part. As that coal spins, the magnetic field is actually pushing and pulling on the electrons. And the voltage goes up, then down, then reverse, then back. So instead of one steady push like a battery, the push itself is flipping back and forth, back and forth. And that constant change in voltage is what makes the electrons change direction over and over. It's like hooking a pump to water, first shoving it one way, then sucking it back the other way. That back and forth flow is what we call alternating current, or AC. Now let's use something that we all know, a light bulb. If you hook the filament to that bulb to a battery, the electrons flow through it in one direction, and it heats up and it glows. If you hook that same filament up to AC, the electrons are running back and forth through it instead of just one way. But they're doing it so fast, 60 times a second here in the U.S., that the filament still glows steady to your eyes. That's the beauty of it. Whether electrons are marching in one direction or they're dancing back and forth, they're both doing the same job creating light, heat, or motion. Okay, so why does this matter for you and me? 
Solar panels and batteries, they give you DC, but your house outlets and most of your appliances, they expect AC. That's where inverters come in. They flip DC into AC, and that's exactly what makes portable power stations so handy. This little guy is the EBL P500 Mini. It's a perfect example of AC and DC living under one roof. On the front, you've got AC outlets so that you can plug in your coffee maker, your laptop, or even a power tool. That's an inverter at work, taking DC from the battery and flipping it into AC. You've also got USB ports and a DC car socket. Uh, that's straight DC power, no conversion needed, and it's perfect for charging your phone, tablets, or maybe having plugging in a 12 volt cooler. It even recharges from solar panels, which are DC, or from the wall, which is AC, and it manages all that flipping back and forth without you even notice it. It's kind of like a translator. It speaks both languages, AC and DC. So here's the big takeaway. Electrons always want to move from high voltage to low voltage. With DC, they march steady in one direction. With AC, they wiggle back and forth. Both are useful, and thanks to tools like the EBL P500 Mini here, you can tap into either one, whether you're off-grid, camping, or just keeping the lights on during an outage. This is part of my Electricity Basics series, so hit subscribe if you want more plain English lessons on solar and power. And I'll see y'all next time.